Hey there, Sam. In the first few episodes of this series, we briefly talked about the throttle middleware. But what is it anyway? In short, throttle means to strangle someone in web development. Nah, actually, I'm just kidding. What it actually means is to limit the number of requests that are allowed in a certain period of time. For example, most web servers will only allow 60 API requests from the same user per minute. The reason is because if we allow unlimited requests to come into our web server, we'll get some malicious user who would send in a million requests per minute in an attempt to bring down our web server. The idea is to overwhelm our app with API requests so that our app will crash or just to hijack our app so that it won't serve the other users. This is known as denial of service attack or DOS for short. Luckily for us, Laravel has a built-in middleware called Trotto that will give us a basic protection against this attack. And it is extremely easy to set this up. What we need to do is to go to our HTTP kernel class and load the Trotto middleware inside the API middleware group, which is already set for us out of the box. The Trotto middleware is really a mapping to the Trotto request middleware class as defined in the routes middleware array down here. Now by default, we're passing in an argument called API to our throttle middleware class. This API argument is a predefined configuration that is provided by Laravel. It is a named throttle configuration that is defined inside our routes service provider. Now inside the routes service provider, there's a method called configure rate limiting. And inside the method is where we can define our own rate limiter. And as you can see here, Laravel has already defined an entry called API, and this is exactly what we used in the throttle middleware just now. So as you can see in the code here, the API rate limiter is really limiting a maximum of 60 requests per minute. We can define our own rate limiter with a different name here by using the rate limiter facade. The for method is how we can add a rate limiter to Laravel. And the first argument is the name of a limiter. And the second argument is a callback function that allows us to define the logic of the rate limiter. The callback function accepts the incoming request as its argument, and it should return an instance of the limit class, which basically defines the configuration of our rate limiter. The per minute method defines how many requests we can allow per minute, and calling the by method will let us set a key to differentiate the request so that we can identify the source of the incoming request. If the user is logged in, we'll use the ID of the user Otherwise, we'll use the IP address of the sender as the key. Now, if you don't want to use a name rate limiter, we can also pass in the parameters manually. So let's go back to our kernel. To tell Laravel that we only want 60 requests per minute, what we need to do is to pass in the argument 60 and 1 to the throttle middleware. How do I know these two numbers? The answer is in the source code. Let's dive into the throttle request middleware. And as you can see in the handle method, the arguments that it is expecting is max attempt and decay minutes. Max attempt stands for the maximum request that is allowed, and decay minutes means the duration for the rate limiting to reset. And as you can see here, Laravel has an if statement here to check if max attempt is a string or not. If it is a string, then we will handle the request by using the name limiter. Otherwise, we'll proceed by the normal means. Behind the scene, Laravel is caching the incoming request by its key. As we discussed just now, the caching key of the request could be the ID of the user or the IP address of the user. And by default, Laravel will store the cache in files as defined in our .env file. If you want Laravel to work faster and get more juice out of it, you can change the cache driver to Redis. Just that if you did change it to Redis, there is a better throttle middleware built just for Redis. Let's go back to our HTTP kernel class and we should replace the default throttle request middleware with throttle request with Redis. That being said, you don't need to touch this if you're not using Redis. All right, that's about everything you need to know about the throttle middleware. Before we end the lesson, I would like to do a quick demo to see what will happen if we reach the rate limit. So I'll modify our throttle middleware so we can only take in two requests per minute. And now let's go to Postman. We'll try to send get request to the index method of our user resources. Click on send. We get a normal response. One more time, still okay. The third time we get an error with a status code of 429, which means too many requests. And we also get an error message saying that we have too many attempts. 
since our app only allows two attempts per minute. All right, that's it. Key takeaway for this lesson. In programming, throttle means to limit the number of operations in a given period of time. The throttle middleware in Laravel helps to mitigate denial of service attack or DOS attack from malicious users. We can define name rate limiter in the route service provider. And by default, Laravel has already defined a rate limiter called API for our application's API routes. We can pass in the rate limiting config directly to the throttle middleware if we prefer not to use name rate limiter. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.